I will thank you everyone for, for being here today. My name is Jorge Martinez. I am from the Office of Information and Communications Technology in the United Nations Secretariat. Um, I'm gonna present today a project that was uh, done in collaboration with the World Identity Network. Uh, Mariana Dahan is standing right here. And with um, UNOPS uh, and uh, Mr. Yoshiyuki Yamamoto, who is back here. Um, this, this project was um, done um, in a collaboration uh, based on a, on a platform that um, OICT uses and that offers to all member states, um, which is called Unite Ideas. Um, so Unite Ideas, um, and um, I want to present this in the same way that, uh, that, that Robert uh, said that member states were invited to contribute. In this case, it's an invitation to member states. Um, we, this is a platform in which we allow collaboration between academia, um, civil society, and governments to build open source technology. So the way, the way this platform works is that um, a member state can uh, think of a problem, uh, think about the possible uh, requirements for that software that they would need or this technology, this experiment. This, this problem is published on United, on the, in the United Ideas platforms. And then the value out of the platform is that we reach out to as many corporations around the world, as many universities around the world, and to all open source communities to develop the software that you need. And so in this situation, uh, we work together with um, UNOPS and um, with World Identity Network on the Blockchain for Humanity Challenge, which uh, we're going to describe in detail um, afterwards. And um, why do we uh, believe in this methodology for innovation, this crowdsourcing methodology? Um, because um, there are a lot of people around the world with a lot of skills. and. Um, they are capable of contributing to a technology problem that you might have, but they don't have the channel to contribute to it. There's um, a, a fantastic, unprecedented growth in the um, uh, development of open source software around the world. And the um, development um, um, sector is not necessarily taking advantage of this open source revolution. So this platform aims to take advantage of that. By putting a problem in this crowdsourcing platform, you leverage uh, global talent. It's not only important that they're located around the world, it's important they're diverse. So they have the diverse points of view, diverse personal experiences, so the solutions that people can contribute to your problems are thought from a different angle. Finally, we want um, that and we, I believe everybody is, is in the same page, that the solutions to the sustainable development goals cannot come from a handful of individuals sitting in government offices, but the whole world needs to contribute. So in the United Ideas platforms, we um, try to get solutions built by people for people. And finally, we get outstanding solutions to the challenges we post. And um, we've had a, a ter a fantastic experiences in which um, individuals that are freelancers working independently or maybe employed by, by, a, by a corporation in their spare time develop technology that would be very hard to build otherwise. And they do it for free as open source software. And so I'm going to finish um, by saying that we get visitors from um, 170 countries, uh, thousands of visits. We've launched 18 challenges so far, and we've received hundreds of open source solutions, including 12 for the um, uh, Blockchain for Humanity challenge. And all of these solutions are open source, so any government who wants to try a similar experiment can leverage the work done by the previous government. And just to um, uh, close my intervention, I want to show you what is the impact of, of having a uh, United Ideas challenge on the people that are working in the challenge? So I have, a, I have a video that shows what the impact on the recipients, on the governments, on the NGOs that receive a solution. But just as important is the impact that it has on people and companies such as Consensus that was the winner of the Blockchain for Humanity challenge. I want to see the impact on, on, on the people that contribute to the challenge. So now I'm going to play a video. I resonate with the platform's commitment towards the SDGs and believe this is a great launch pad for giving life to new and innovative ideas. Is we really want to see the manifestation of solutions uh, that utilize blockchain in its best light. This is my third attempt at a challenge by Unite Ideas and I find these challenges very interesting because they provide you an opportunity to showcase your skills and also at the same time worked with social good. 
is to provide CKM skills to projects that have the potential to have a positive impact on social issues. I decided to join the challenge because, you know, people in developing countries have a hard time getting access to clean and curated data. And I think that this project is important because the UN provides a lot of valid data sources uh, that can empower people in these developing countries. I wanted to create something that could reach different kinds of people. It's rare that you can make something that helps such a broad range of needs. I decided to do the challenge for two main reasons. The first was it was an opportunity to build a real product that might be used to spread innovation across the globe. The second reason was it was an opportunity to get my hands on open source technologies and collaborate with my peers in product development. I really like the UN as an organization because it is the one global organization we have that can gather data at a global scale about communities in the world. And in so doing, it makes it possible for us to build solidarity between people who otherwise would not know anything about each other. Hi, I'm Sun Hao, from the Fudehamm University of Science and Technology. Then this is our first time to participate in the United Nations Cyber Security Project. In this project, we can use our learning and 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 learning. 呃，在这些应用当中，可以检验我们知识学习的程度，然后可以锻炼我们的技能，可以让我们了解到它实际这些我们学习的算法在实际呃的世界中它是怎样运行的。然后，呃，希望我们能在这个项目中，呃，跟联合国的呃同事们共事的呃非常的愉快，然后也希望我们能够做出他们满意的东西。Thank you so much, and hello everyone. Uh, really pleased to be here. Uh, I must say that in my experience as a technologist and also a development expert, I worked for about a decade at the World Bank, uh, leading the identification for development agenda that I have created in 2014, and now it's a global program. I have never come across a technology as powerful as blockchain because it allows us to um, solve some of the centuries-old problems we have related to trust. And identity is central to many of our interactions, be it in the real world or in the digital world. Uh, most importantly, in the digital economy, um, identity is critical to being able to prove who you are and what you are entitled to, what are the benefits you can access. So blockchain appeared to be really the next frontier technology beyond you know, the usual biometrics technology or other innovations out there. So we were thinking about a huge problem that the world faces today, which is the human trafficking. And um, uh, while at the World Bank, I, I've been uh, writing and advocating, working a lot in the space uh, to give identity to the marginalized. About a billion people today have no way to prove who they are. They live in the poorest countries of the world. And out of that uh, fraction of the population, um, a big number of them are children and minors uh, who today um, you know, are born uh, without everyone knowing it. They become invisible to the development agencies, to the governments who design um, assistance programs for them. Uh, and this tends to perpetuate, so it doesn't get fixed over time during their lives. Uh, but more worryingly, I think uh, the fact of not having identities put these uh, children at risk, the risk of human trafficking when uh, children become an easy prey to those who use fake ID documents to get them smuggled across the borders of, of the countries, uh, away from the families or, or someone uh, who was uh, having a guardianship over them. Then they are being sold to sex brothels. They get caught in modern slavery rings. And in my country of origin, they also um, become part of the illicit organ trade. So I thought I should do something about it and that the technology is there uh, to help us solve this issue. So together with colleagues from the United Nations, UNOPS, and UNOICT, we launched this global challenge, uh, which we titled Blockchain for Humanity. And we wanted to see how blockchain technology can help us, but uh, 
more importantly, the government of Moldova, who is a, a key stakeholder in this process, to see how we can first give identities to children and minors in the country. But then, how can we integrate this data uh, in a national ID system that, with the help of the blockchain technology, will highlight uh, every single trafficking attempt that is happening at the border? So we envisioned something that would look like this. Um, which is a, as a blockchain-based integrated ID system, uh, which is a user-centric application uh, where with unique biometric authentication, the, the person can prove uniquely who they are, and then the links that are provided to the immigration services and border police will automatically bring to the knowledge of the law enforcement um, entities that such trafficking attempt has been made possible. This is an illustration, but thanks to the uh, global challenge that uh, uh, Jorge has uh, described in more details, we received an overwhelming uh, response to this question and we received a series of very good uh, proposals that the government is now considering for implementation. It is going to be the first pilot of this kind in the world, uh, Moldova being a fairly small country. The pilot basically means a national scale. Uh, so uh, we are very excited to, to work with the government and also with UN agencies to implement this solution. We try to turn invisible children into invincible ones. And with your help and support, I think uh, we can make it happen. Before I want to give um, um, the, the floor to Yoshi Yamamoto and uh, really very impressed by the support we received from uh, UNOPS. Um, but I also want to highlight a couple of challenges that as uh, an organization who is working with the UN system we face, it really comes down to coordination and cooperation on the ground, and also the funding. I think uh, there are many wonderful initiatives in the blockchain space that get a tremendous amount of funding, and then there are projects like that who are more humanitarian um, in nature that would benefit from this uh, donor funding. So please reach out to us, and again, we work with UNOPS, but we think that a broader range of stakeholders and UN agencies who are present in Moldova and in other countries where we work, uh, everyone should get on board and, and try collectively solve this humanitarian issue. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, good, good morning. I'm giving one minute. <coughs> you can see uh, my sticker here. Uh, we're talking about ID today, but I lost my ID. So <laughs> I was stuck at the gate this morning. Um, it was impossible to prove I am I, I am me. So that's a question we are trying to tackle. <laughs> My ID is everywhere. I have a Japanese passport, a UN Lesser Passe, uh, you know, insurance company, my hospital, educational uh, institution, everyone has my ID. But the problem is they are not connected to each other. So once I lost one in one particular occasion, I'm nobody. So that is a situation, question we have to tackle. The girl happened to be uh, trapped in a criminal ring and forced to work in the sex industry in unknown country for this girl. She or boy, she or he might be able to escape somehow from the brothel, run into the one of the embassies, where whatever available, without any possession, no ID. What can we do? We absolutely do nothing because this girl has no ID. So this is a situation we have to solve. We have so many ID management system in UN. Each UN agency, of course, have it. All government has it. And within the government, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, Ministry of whatever, everyone has ID. We all try to tackle with good intention, but we are not connected. Then what do we do? Option one, we connect 
make a huge central database. But that is a very, very dangerous. We may end up having a big brother already in the world. We are all controlled completely by somebody. Somebody has a good intention. Next day, he, get, he or she gets sick, change their mind, or he's attacked, or he's forced to do something against his or her will. Anything will happen. So the single point of failure should be avoided by any cost, at any cost. So option two, what do we do in the current situation? So many identity systems, we decentralize them. We put back the ownership of identity into the individual. So that's where uh, blockchain came into the picture. I have looked into all the detailed uh, um, proposal from the tech community. I was really impressed. They are really aware of the current dilemma. We have so many identity management systems, but we don't want to go into the super centralized identity system. But what is the solution? Yeah, decentralized identity system, but reality, how we manage it. So that's the question. We received uh, lots of ideas. I can't go into the detail, so that's where we are. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, also, um, uh, even before the questions, I think the most important um, slide that we wanted to share is that the results, the 12 solutions that are open source for you to look at are uh, detailed in these addresses, ideas.unite.org. And uh, there's a publication explaining the process, the, the different concepts of each solution proposed at win.systems. So these are all open source materials. There's a consensus even um, uh, provided uh, a mobile app, uh, the full source code that you could, a country could customize for their purpose.